Hiya folks and welcome back to DIY IT on ZDNet. Today we're going to talk about a project that actually mixes two of the DIY IT projects. The first one is the Broadband Studio which we've been working on now for a couple weeks and of course the long-term ongoing DIY IT discovery series in 3D printing. And they all revolve around uh, what is becoming the audio control console for the Broadband Studio. This is a rack thing that is really meant, I think, for lectures, you know, or for putting your laptop on and leaning up against this little stand. But I like it because this thing goes up and down and angles, so it's perfect for holding the mixer. As long as I get it lined up right, it's perfect for holding the mixer. And there's a space down here for the interface and the Mac Mini. So the whole audio system and the computer itself can all be monitored and dealt with right off of this thing, which then rolls around in the studio. I also bought it because it's got uh, these wood pieces, which means I can screw stuff into it. So the interesting problems here are that this little um, holder is barely enough to hold the mixer from falling. Um, it's stable when it's weighted down and not moving. But as soon as I move the, uh, the stand around, it starts to fall off, which I discovered earlier. I didn't, it didn't actually hit the floor, but I caught it. So I need to build some brackets for here and here. And I also want to build some brackets there. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do just using blue tape to illustrate. And then uh, we'll go in to uh, the workshop, actually take some measurements. That's a piece that's not going to be used for the moment. and. Uh, go from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of tabs that'll mount here, come down, and screw on over here. So they'll kind of tuck over this edge, screw on, and come down here. Now because this thing isn't particularly secure, I'm also going to need to make some kind of thing that not only attaches here, doesn't block the sound, right? But I'm thinking also to make it go all the way across. So I'm thinking that I'm going to build some kind of strip, which is now connected to my wire here, and make a supporting strip that comes around and will hold this whole thing on. Again, I'm using the blue tape just to sort of illustrate it so you can see what I'm planning on doing. And that way, if I have a, a plastic unit with a bracket here, and a strip with a couple pieces of plastic holding these, this thing should be nice and secure and this will screw, screw down with wood screws down here. Now this piece down here, uh, I'm going to do it as a two layer piece and I don't have a lot of space because while there's this wood area in front, there's not too much wood area in the back. Um, so I'm only going to mount it in the front and these aren't likely to go flying but because of the weight of cables, sometimes I find that the Mac itself winds up tipping up when the heavy cables are pulled onto it. So I don't want that to happen and I want the interface to stay put. So I'm going to build a crossover piece. Getting the table the tape off of here is a bit of a challenge. Uh, and let's just do something like this. I'm going to build a crossover piece that comes down here, comes down here, and mounts and secures these units you know, obviously not with blue tape, but that'll give you an idea of where it goes. And I'm also thinking, because the interface cables come off of here and need to go into the back, I'm also thinking that I might make uh, some kind of looping thing that I actually put onto this bracket that allows me to stick the cables through the looping thing and manage the cables. And, and that looping thing probably to be neater might be up here. We'll see how that comes together in 123 uh, in Design when I put it together. So that is the scope of this phase of the project, which is what we need. Next, what I'm going to do is, is take a pile of measurements and then get into the CAD program, make some designs, and then print it. So there's a, a variety of stages to do this. But one of the things before I get started I want to point out is this is where I keep talking about 3D printing as reaching into our normal workspace, not for prototyping but for custom things. This is for my studio. I need custom bracketry for a studio for work because I work in the studio. This is a good part of how I make my living is using the, the sound system in the studio to be able to do webcasts. And I need these custom brackets to make sure that the whole thing doesn't collapse in the middle of a webcast to, you know, a thousand people or more. 
So um, I want to make sure I have these things and using the 3D printer is an ideal solution. In fact, because it's audio, the plastic 3D printer might be a more ideal solution than were I to have the skills fabricating something out of metal because we don't know what kind of interference some kind of metal bracketry would have here or to the audio system. Whereas if I just use um, plastic, there won't be any interference. Nice quality PLA plastic should do just fine. So there you go, let's, uh, let's reconnect again in a couple minutes in the workshop. Okay, so I don't think I've gone into too much detail before on the measuring process of making a 3D printed object. But the thing is, is that um, measurements are essential because you want things to fit. So um, these are going to be kind of complex measurements because, um, as you can see, this is on an angle. And if I want to make a bracket that goes here, I have to make it fit the angle properly. Um, there's a couple of other things that are involved as well. This is um, this paper. This is the build plate, and the reason I brought this piece out is that when um, something prints on the build plate, it, it prints on this. This is actually the thing that the 3D printer, the MakerBot, uses to generate the build. And so, what that means is that whatever you're building has to fit on the build plate. Now, I'm looking at making brackets for um, the Focusrite interface, which will certainly fit. Uh, the Mac Mini, that's going to be a just fit. I could do it on an angle, but it, it will fit, but it's going to be tight, which makes me a little concerned about being able to do... Yeah, those corners aren't going to really work. I could do a strap across but the corners themselves, there'd be no space to do it, even if I did this on an angle. And um, one of the things I, you can do with ABS that you can't really do as well with PLA is you can um, essentially glue two pieces of plastic together nicely uh, with ABS, but it's a little bit rougher with PLA, and I don't really want to do a glued front piece here. So I had originally said that I was going to build a strip that came all the way across like this and held the corner. But I think what I'm going to do instead, get rid of this extra blue tape, I think what I'm going to do instead is build a corner module that comes around like that and will hold. It'll do just as well and I won't need, I won't use as much plastic, it won't take as long to print and so forth. So let's, uh, let's get the easy measurements out of the way. And one of the things to be aware of is that I'm not just measuring the box, I'm measuring the feet on the box. Now here, because they're right at the edge, they'll work great with the calipers. It's a digital caliper, and um, I love these things. They're, this is like an $18 thing at Harbor Freight. It's not terribly expensive, and I can do a measurement. And so what will happen is I'll be able to um, take a series of measurements and then add them together to create what I'm looking for. Um, That'll be a little bit more problematic with this thing because, let me grab, hang on a second, let me move things around because I don't want to bang this on the wood. Get rid of the build plate now because I've demonstrated what I wanted to show you with that. Old piece of, of foam floor tile, but it's great for balancing without scratching stuff. So I have feet here, right? But I don't have feet, I'm gonna want to bracket here can you see that, I think? I'm going to want to put the bracket here, and I'm not going to have the offset for the feet, and that's going to be a little difficult to measure. So I'm going to do a trick to, to make that measurement, and then I'll also do the same trick over here to make sure that the measurement on this side works out. Um, but let's do, um, let's start off with uh, the focus right in the Mac Mini. Um, and then I will, uh, I'll do one measurement with you and then I'll come back afterwards and um, show you what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is, and, and by the way, I also have this um, combo square, which is a carpenter's tool. And so in theory, I could place this down, slide it down and get a measurement. But 
first off, you have to read this very carefully, and 3D printing is almost entirely metric, and this is inches and fractions. So I'm not going to be using this tool, although uh, I will be taking this piece of metal and using it as part of my measurement process. But let's uh, let's start with the focus rate. Let's get um, let's take one measurement of the height of the focus rate. So um, I just tend to write stuff down. It's a little easier. I have thought about you know taking pictures of it and using like Evernote to do it and all that. But this works just as well. So let's zero the the meter. Okay, and just bring out the caliper, bring it in. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is 48.66 millimeters. So tall, 48.66 mm. All right, so I'm gonna measure this and this, and when I come back to measure this, I will um, show you some more tricks. Okay, so measuring the height on the Mac Mini is a bit of a challenge uh, because there's this dip here, and then I have these Velcro bottoms. Now, I'm not using the Velcro in uh, this current incarnation, but they're really nicely placed, and I don't really wanna pull them off. Uh, I had used them to hold them to the old table, but I want to leave them there because I may decide that I need that extra firmness. So I need to measure with the Velcro and don't think the calipers are going to get me. Oh, all right, the calipers will reach inside with the Velcro so I can do that measurement. So all right, I will do the, uh, the Mac Mini measurement across the Velcro. So notice that I'm going to be taking this, squishing it like that, not too hard and that'll give me the measurement of the Mac Mini height with the Velcro, which is 38.10. Well, that was special. The neighbor's car alarm went off and triggered every dog in the neighborhood, including my own, and that went on for like 15 minutes, so that was enjoyable. I'm gonna freeze the frame here for a moment because not only did a car alarm go off, but that alarm triggered the barking of every dog in the neighborhood, including my own. And on top of that, I seem to have lost the chunk of video that showed the most critical part of measurements I wanted to show you. So you can see that there are these two strips of blue tape on the, uh, on the mixer, and they are 50 millimeters apart. I measured those out specifically to make sure that they were 50 millimeters apart. And what I did was I took a measurement of just inside the lower blue tape and just below the upper blue tape to get the full width of the, uh, the unit so I could create the angle. Now the thing is, is that as I showed you with that metal bar uh, coming off the ruler, what I did is I strung that under the two uh, feet on each side and I took a measurement because you, there was no way to measure with the calipers the feet at the point I wanted. I took a measurement across that bar uh, so that I was able to get a, a good picture of exactly what those two points were and able to construct an angle off of that. And then I subtracted the two millimeter thickness of the bar. So that is the part of the video you lost. Let's continue on and we'll put it all together. But we're back. So I'm gonna again use the trick of taping this thing on, which will give me a better indicator of the thickness of that point. So I'm gonna grab another strap of tape here, just run it over this. It doesn't have to last long. It just has to make it up there because the thickness of this whole thing is uh, is common across everything. So let's see if we can just secure this up here for a minute. That should make that hold. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm gonna take the measurement right here. And again, I know that there's a two millimeter piece there. So that measurement is 21.13. 
so lip lip 21.13 minus 2 I'll make this minus 2 and then this is also minus 2 so I have my lip I have my height uh, for both of these points so that'll give me that bracket now the corner bracket I still have the lip the lip is going to be the same but what I don't have is the height at the corner so let's see what we need to do to get that piece of information let's see what bring this up the caliper should be able to give me Yeah, the caliper can actually measure across with the foot here because you can see it reads. So at the base, it's 48.62. And yeah, there's going to be a little bit of a decline here, but it's going to be a relatively small amount. And this is going to tuck inside, so it should be good. So we'll call it... Oh, that's 47. Point, we'll call it 48 millimeters. That should do well for what we want. So at the corner, I'll flip this on the other side. Corner side, 48 millimeter. And um, then I'm just gonna come in here for whatever distance I decide to come in, which will probably be you know, 20 or 30 millimeters and do the same thing and I'm just going to make that a square it doesn't have to be um, it doesn't have to be on an angle because um, it's just going to tuck in so that should work for that and that's our set of measurements so the next thing that's going to have to happen is once I've got this whole series of measurements is to take it into CAD and design something and then make it work so that's next Okay, so let's take a look at the design of the bracket for the Mac Mini and the audio interface. As you can see, there, this is the Mac Mini and the audio interface that the bracket goes around, and if we sort of rotate it from the front, you can see how it's meant to fit over with a screw hole here and a screw hole here. So let's just hide uh, those two things so you can see the bracket in its entirety. The real unique feature of the bracket are these two loop items. Uh, and the purpose of those are to both give it a little bit of added security and the ability to run a cable through it. But you'll notice that there is this hole here, which is really a cylinder that was taken out of it. And the reason for that hole is becomes obvious when I try to put a screwdriver in there. It's my model of a screwdriver. You can see that if I hadn't cut a hole, it would have been really hard. Let's get that in there nice and centered would have been very difficult to put the screw in. So I cut out a channel with a cylinder, uh, which not only gave me the ability to put a screw in, but also gives me the ability to strap things to, uh, to either of these sides with tie wraps or with Velcro straps. Um, and also gives me the opportunity to have something that looks kind of cool at the same time. So that is the design of the bracket. Uh, let's go ahead and print that, and uh, then we'll move on to the mixer component. Okay, and here are the upper two side brackets for the mixer. You can see the angle that these things wound up on. Here's the angle. And so this is why I did all that angular measurement, so it could run across the angle, the little lip that goes across the mixer, and as you can see, they match. Uh, this also has a support piece uh, to make sure that it's got a little bit of, of additional support. In addition, um, I cut a hole in this as well using the same technique. And in this case, the purpose wasn't to provide screw path because there's plenty of screw path this way. Whoops, there we go. Let's bring this back around. Uh, but again, the ability to tie wrap cords. Now, I didn't really expect to have cords running up here, but since I was strapping this on, I thought it was a good idea to at least have that in case I needed it as a feature. Uh, so that's a pretty simple model. Let's, uh, let's print that out and let's go on to the final piece, which is the bottom brackets.
Okay, so as you can see, this took a couple of design iterations. This is the part that goes on the bottom of the mixer to hold the mixer and keep it from falling off. Uh, and I started with what I thought was going to be a good design here, which had two failures. First, it needed this little cut-in area. But two, let me zoom in on this for a second and show you its kind of fatal design flaw. And that's that there's only one screw here, so any pressure against the bottom could cause this thing to spin on the screw and eventually drop the unit. So one screw, now it's not actually spinning on the screw's axis, but you can get the idea. One screw is not going to solve our problem. So I went to the next design, which is this one, and realized that two screws would be great because one screw would might have pressure, but two of them would prevent the thing from spinning. Um, and to do that, I extended the wall up and I extended the wall out, and I didn't bother thinking about the front of the dis of the mixer, and so I extended this out as well, which meant it wound up covering some of the volume control knobs, which is kind of the whole purpose of the mixer. So, uh, although it fit in place reasonably nicely, uh, it didn't actually work uh, because it got in the way of being functional. So then I got to this design, which accomplished a lot. It fit above the little lip that the, uh, the thing was holding on. Uh, there was a space here to allow for it to both catch the uh, the mixer and hold it and also let me use the mixer's tools. Uh, but let's see if I can make this, this so that you can see it. But as you can see from the side, let me zoom out a bit and uh, go to perspective view. Well, let's see, that might be confusing, but let's see what I can show you. Bear with me here for a second, folks. As you can see, um, this is straight across, and it turned out to not fit right. Even though I kept saying, oh, I, I just needed to make a cup, I didn't have to have an angle, it didn't fit right. It just didn't hold right once I started to push it up against the physical object. So that meant I went to this design, which used the same angle that I computed from the, uh, from the upper bracket. And so I actually took the exact same angular piece from the upper bracket and derived uh, the two bottom brackets. And so let's take a quick look at the two bottom brackets from here. Uh, you can now see these are the two bottom brackets. Let's uh, rotate that a little bit more and you can get a better feel for them. In this case, uh, there's a left and right. Uh, it's got the two screws. It's got a support piece. In this case, there's there better not be any wires right down where the controls are. So I didn't put any holes in that to, to do wire uh, wire management just because I really don't want to give myself an excuse to put wires down there. So this is the, uh, th this is the, the last uh, set, and I finally ran these off. Um, each of these took about three hours to print, um, and I finally got a piece. So I'm going to show you the prints of these, and then I'll show you it all put together. Okay, let's take a look at the entire unit. As you can see, the interface and the Mac Mini are on the lower shelf and the mixer is on the angle on the upper shelf. And you can see that all of these are held together with brackets. Let's first take a quick look at the bottom brackets and you can see how they come around the front and aren't blocking the volume control. And you can see the upper brackets as well. Now, if we look at this from a little bit more of a side view, you can get a really good feel for how the mixer brackets are held together. If we uh, slide on down to uh, the interface and the Mac Mini, you can see how the bracket holds them in place. And if we want, we can zoom on in. Let's do a quick little zoom in. And you can see how the wires route through the wire guide that is in the unit. And so let's pull on back, take a look at the entire uh, audio console in its completed form. That's the project. Thank you very much. Uh, down in your lower right corner, you'll see a subscribe button if you want further updates on this stuff. Uh, there is an associated video that shows the building of the uh, cabinet itself. And of course, there is the accompanying article, which is also described in the show notes. Thanks very much, folks. Have a great day.